So I just landed in uh, East Timor, or Timor-Leste, and I was informed that the people here love seeing airplanes arrive. They're just fascinated with it. And if you look outside the window, there's just hundreds of people right along there, just waiting and watching this, this airplane. I'm super excited for East Timor. So I just finished editing my video for Indonesia and Timor-Leste does not have the fastest internet at all. I'm, uh, I'm typically pulling under one megabit per second, uh, usually closer to around 320 kilobits per second. Uh, it's gotten to the point where at some times when I'm chatting with people on any sort of messenger, I can actually see the little emojis take time to load. It's that slow sometimes. So I'm about to upload my video to YouTube, which is a three and a half gigabyte file since I film everything in 4K. And I'm really excited to see how long this is supposed to take. So this is pretty cool. In Dili, the currency is actually all in USD. So like if you're American and you come to visit uh, Dili in East Timor, you just use your standard like five, 10, $20 bill denominations. However, when you get to currency that's $1 and below, they have native coins that they use instead of cash. And uh, like a quarter is not a, an American quarter, it's a uh, Timorian quarter. Uh, so here's kind of what it looks like. You got a little 50 cent piece there, a little 25 center there. Um, they don't have uh, singles. So you, you got your 100 coin there. Here's your nickel replacement. And I don't know if they have a penny. I couldn't find a penny. But, yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> you think I could uh, bring it back to the U.S. and try to pay with this? I'll be like, well, it works in, in East Timor, right? So I'm pretty far into my trip in Dili, and I've been learning a lot about East Timor and the history. Uh, and, you know, East Timor is very much pretty similar, pretty close to a third world country, I'd, I'd argue uh, that. Uh, infrastructure um, outside of the, the capital in Delhi is, is pretty poor. And um, today, I believe I'm gonna be driving outside of the capital to uh, go exploring with a friend I made on the, uh, during waiting for customs to come into Delhi. His name's Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy was explaining to me that the locals don't really have any sort of uh, building standards or building codes yet. It's just not important to them. And so uh, houses can like easily fall over in five to ten years, but people don't have the money to really invest the extra uh, bit that would make their house last longer. And just in their mind, um, they can just rebuild it again. Chris Maria or Antonio? Maria. Maria. A big guy. Yeah, that's a girl. Yeah. Girl, this yeah. is a big girl. Kind of lazy. Yeah. Why do they keep it? They're just like for entertainment purposes? Uh, the or? crocodiles themselves are uh, the Timorese national animal. Oh, right, 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 right. Wow. So Steve Irwin actually captured this 
uh, crocodile and gave it to the Timorese because I guess the crocodile is the Timorese national an animal. That's really cool. So there's one here and then the other guy. Oh, I can see. Head's poking up out of the water. My. Oh, there my. he comes. My. Okay, my. My. Say my. Thing is huge. Okay, say my. Say my toy. There we go. Coming on up. Say my. And so, they're not over out in the ocean, though, right? They are definitely, yep. Uh, Port Hera has say my. Uh, four or five. Oh, down yes. There. Say mine. Just yeah, in the, yeah, like and I'm, they just hang out in the salt water. Yeah, yeah. No shit. Wow. So they're salt water crocodiles. Yeah. Are crocodiles normally oh, salt water? Yeah. Ah, oh, oh, two types. Okay. Fresh and uh, oh, salt. Oh, so this is a salt water crocodile. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> this thing is huge. He looks like he's yeah, struggling yeah. to like lift himself out of there, but like. This guy's yeah. acting like he's putting a chicken on the hook. They can place him out. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, he's fat though, he's massive. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Chicken, huh? Yeah. Alright. This next few minutes in uh, this following shot are gonna be maybe a little barbaric. Yeah. Uh, they have chicken fighting next door. And of course, in no way. I don't condone it, but uh, it's important to me to show the world how it is. Uh, so I'm going to film this. Um, I recommend skipping ahead uh, a bit. Uh, I'll put a little uh, comment right underneath so you can skip ahead. Um, there will probably be blood and chicken death, and uh, that'll be uh, disturbing to see. But it's important because it's really what goes on in the world. So this rooster fighting is pretty intense. They're actually a fixating blade. And they're going to be wrapping that around the rooster's, uh, the back of his foot, so he can slash at the, at the other rooster. So you can see that this blade is like currently covered up. <laughs> so they got the blade. The blade's been removed. So it seems like they bring their faces close together so they get really angry at each other. Put money on it. All right, they're taking money now after uh, the rooster's been agitated. Oh shit.
The winner. The winner. The winner, yeah. He, he, he got a pain too. Okay. But he won. Yeah. How did he win? Because the other one ran away. So, the uh, thing about Timor Leste is that, um, you know, it's such a, a poor country and its history has, has been such a mixed bag that when you try to look for something like culturally that really sticks out uh, there really isn't too much going on uh, they were settled and invaded by Portuguese for a while and then uh, Indonesia had them uh, occupied for quite a while and uh, the UN was here for a good amount of time so you have all these uh, competing influences coming in and out and like stripping away its culture and putting it back in so it's hard to sort of find any sort of uh, traditional Timorese food. Uh, there are some cultural things that are still alive, like uh, chicken fighting, and um, I guess some traditional clothing that you could find. But other than that, there really isn't much that's unique to, uh, to Timorese culture, at least from what I've observed and, and heard about so far. Uh, so despite uh, Timor Leste kind of being a little third worldy in some parts, they also apparently love to throw uh, a lot of big parties, uh, like the one behind me for uh, baptism that's been going on. And and so they'll save up a lot of money and they'll buy like really fancy clothing and uh, dress up the best that they can. Like you'll get like 300 people coming in, all eating food together and have a good time. So I think this is actually my first authentic Timorese food experience and I'm leaving the country in like an hour so I'm happy that I got to experience something. So let's let's check this out. This looks like a satay, right? But like in some sort of sauce. It's really tough to chew on. Well I guess it's a good thing because like you don't know about like meat quality here so you want to cook it very thoroughly. Also the cows in uh Timor are uh, more like buffalo or, or barley cows. They're not, not, not the, the cows you see in America or Australia. Mm. They're a different meat. And again, they put so much. The country itself is very, very beautiful, and the people are great. Uh, they're very friendly, uh, they're kind, uh, crime seems to be pretty low, if even even in the major, even in the capital city of Dili, crime seems to be fairly low. The future of the country is kind of uncertain. Uh, they have uh, strong exports when it comes to coffee. Um, a lot of people and expats are, are coming into the country to attempt to encourage agriculture here and if they can get a good agricultural business going on then perhaps they can export a lot of a lot of items and uh, potentially succeed as a country. Uh, Timor Leste is very interesting. It's one of the least visited countries in the world and it's also the second newest country in the world behind Kosovo as of today. Um, hmm. All in all, I enjoyed Timor Leste. I wouldn't come back for a while, but I'm very interested to see where it's going to be in the next 10 to 20 years. I think it actually does have quite a bit of potential for growth, but I'm really, really interested in where it's going to be in the next 10 to 20 years. I also met some fantastic, incredible people here. Jeremy, once again, thank you for uh, coming out to find me at my hotel and showing me around. Uh, it was, you have no idea how much I appreciate it. Um, and I can't wait to see the friends that I made here again. And I'm excited to see the future of Timor Leste. 
uh, because I honestly feel that it's uncertain, but it has a lot of potential. So I'm very excited to see what the future holds for Team Mustang. Thank you so much.